Hello dear students, welcome to EPG Partshala. I am Dr. Mandeep Kaur, Associate Professor, Khalsa College of Education, Ranjit Avenue, Amritsar. Well students, today we will discuss about landmarks in the development of educational administration in India after independence. After studying the lesson, you will be able to explain the University Education Commission, discuss the recommendation of Secondary Education Commission, elucidate the recommendation of Kothari Education Commission for school education and know the role of NPE in helping the overhauling of education. Actually, development of educational administration in India started from the Hunter Commission prior to 1947. The role of education administrators in India was simply to carry out the restricted educational program developed by the British. But Hunter Commission in the year 1882 under the chairmanship of William Hunter was the first commission which gave wide and comprehensive recommendations on education in Indian context. This commission recommended that number of inspectors in every area should be raised so that the every institution may be inspected. It suggested that as far as possible, the inspector of the primary school should be local. Following independence, we have developed vastly expanded educational programs with greatly changed objectives. For the implementation of these new programs, the educational administrator's job takes on new dimensions and requires not only new theories of educational administration but also new techniques. Now we will discuss some of the important committees and commissions responsible for development of educational administration in India. First one is University Education Commission. As education being the chief instrument for reconstruction and transformation of society, so steps were taken in this direction. A series of commissions were appointed to survey, study, review and recommend improvements in the different sectors of education. To take into the problems of university education, the University Education Commission was appointed by the Government of India in 1948 under the chairmanship of Dr. S. Radhakrishnan. The commission made important suggestions for improving the standard of university education in the country. These suggestions are, number one is, university education should be placed in the concurrent list, which means that both the state and central governments could legislate on the subject of education. Next one is, the central government should be responsible for finance, coordination of facilities in special subject and adoption of a national policy ensuring minimum standards of efficiency. Universities should be teaching institutions rather than affiliating types. University grant commission should be set up for the allocation of funds. The state should recognize its responsibility for the maintenance of standard and financing of higher education. The aid should be given to private college for building equipments. Steps should be taken to amend income tax laws in order to enable them to give effect to recommendations. A three years degree course for the first university degree be introduced. Rural universities should be established in various states of the country. Next commission is Secondary Education Commission in the year 1952. Our secondary education remains the weakest link in our educational machinery and needs urgent reform. This led to establishment of an All India Commission for Secondary Education in 1952 under the chairmanship of Dr. A. Lakshman Swami Mudaliar. This commission offered a number of suggestions to recognize secondary education based on new goals and needs of independent India. The commission was equally concerned with the qualitative improvement of the schools, new trends in examination, 
guidance and extracurricular work were brought into the school programs. The following are the main recommendations of the commission. Number one is secondary education should commence after four or five years period of primary education and should include the middle or the senior basic secondary stage of three years and the higher secondary stage of four years. The present intermediate stage should be replaced by the higher secondary stage which should be of four years duration. One year of the present intermediate being included in it. As a consequence of the preceding recommendations, the first degree course in the university should be of three years duration. For those who pass out of the high school, there should be provision of a pre-university course. Next is multi-purpose schools should be established wherever possible to provide varied course of interest to students with diverse aims, aptitude and abilities. Technical schools should be started in large number either separately or as a part of multi-purpose schools. The commission's recommendations were integrated in the successive five years plan and began to implement it both at the center and in the state in 1954. Next commission is Indian Education Commission. This commission popularly known as Kutari Education Commission formed on 14th July 1964 under the chairmanship of Dalit Singh Kutari. This commission realized that existing facilities and arrangements for the training of educational administrators are inadequate. Training is needed to orient educational administrators to educational expansions and improvement programs. In this respect, Commission made few recommendations which are the state institutes of education in collaboration with the university wherever needed should organize in-service education programs for all non-gazetted educational staff on the administrative and inspectional side. Second is they should provide in-service training of about two months to every officer in every five years of his or her service. In addition, they should also organize conferences, seminars and workshops for the gazetted staff. The Ministry of Education should run a national staff college for senior educational administrators of the State Department of Education. Some incentives should be provided to the officer who would improve their qualifications materially through programs of in-service education. This commission has given recommendation for both school as well as for higher education. Now, we will discuss recommendations of the commission with respect to school education system, which are adoption of a common school system of public education as the national goal and its effective implementation in a phased program spread over 20 years. Participation in programs of community development and national reconstruction should be an integral part of all education from the primary to undergraduate state. Provision of free and compulsory education of good quality for all children up to the age of 14 years as given in the article 45 of the constitution. A training of efficient leadership at all levels by expanding secondary and higher education and providing equal opportunities to all children of merit as well as to all children irrespective of economic status, caste, religion, sex or place of residence. Next is the new educational system should consist of one to three years of preschool education Next is a primary stage of 7 to 8 years divided into lower primary stage of 4 to 5 years and a higher primary stage of 3 or 2 years. A lower secondary stage of 3 or 2 years, a higher secondary stage of 2 years of general education or 1 to 3 years of vocational education. 
a high education stage having a course of 3 years or more for the first degree and followed by the course for the second or research degree of varying durations. First public examination to come at the end of 10 years of schooling. Secondary school should be of two types, high schools providing a 10 year schooling and higher secondary schools providing a course of 11 to 12 years. Transfer of the pre-university stage from the universities and affiliated college to secondary schools by 1975 to 1976 and the duration of the course to lengthen to two years by 1985-86. The university grant commission should be responsible for effecting the transfer of all pre-university or intermediate work from university and affiliated colleges to schools. Duration of the first degree should not be less than 3 years and the duration of the second degree to be 2 or 3 years. Standard calendar to be worked out by the Ministry of Education and the University Grants Commission in consultation with the state governments and universities concerned. Commission also made certain recommendations for private recognized schools and these are private schools should have a right to exist and if they do not seek aid or recognition from the state, there should be little or no interference. The commission suggested compulsory registration for unrecognized schools. Next one is each private school should have a management committee consisting of the representatives of the voluntary organizations. The staffing of the private schools should be broadly on the pattern prescribed for the government or local authority schools. Moving towards the higher education, for the higher education university should lay down the structure and the organization in broad terms and the relevant details may be prescribed by ordinances. Universities should also evolve dynamic techniques of administration and organization suited to their special functions and purpose. Commissions made certain recommendations in respect to higher edu education and these are the representation of the non-academic personnel should be mainly for the purpose of presenting the wider interest of the society as a whole to the university and not to impose them. The university should give considerable autonomy to their departments, schools of studies. There should be joint committees of teachers and students in each department and in every college a central committee under the chairmanship of the head of the institution for the discussion of common problems and difficulties. The academic council should be the policy making body of the university and sole authority for determining the course of study and standards. The executive council with the vice chancellor as the chairman should consist of 15 to 20 members, about half being internal and half being external. Each university should have an academic planning board for permanent planning and evolution. Next is the governors of the state should be the visitor of all university in the state and should have power to direct inspection or inquiry into the affairs of the university. There should be a council of affiliated colleges in every affiliating university to advise the university on all matters relating to affiliation of colleges. The Education Commission also investigated various aspects of educational administration in the country and made the following recommendation for bringing about elasticity in educational administration. First one is the administrators should change their attitude and cultivate an openness of mind and a spirit of inquiry rather than a rule of the thumb approach. Next is the modern officer oriented system should be adopted where most of the work will be done by the officer at the own level with the help of small sectorial staff. The practice of holding periodic review that is every three or five years of important administrative practices, comparative studies of practices in administrative matter 
in different states may be undertaken. State Institutes of Education and the National Staff College for Educational Planners and Administrators should take the lead and organize appropriate training courses for educational administrators. Very important turn in the field of education is National Policy on Education in the year 1968. Based on the report and recommendations of the Education Commission, the government announced the first National Policy on Education in 1968, which called for a radical restructuring and equality of educational opportunities so that the national integration and more cultural and economic development can be achieved. It advocated for having a broad uniform educational structure in all parts of the country and increasing gradually the investment in education. The ultimate objective was to adopt 10 plus 2 plus 3 pattern. The National Policy on Education NPE was adopted by the parliament in May 1986. This new policy called for special emphasis on the removal of disparities and to equalize educational opportunity. NPE 1986 recommended for an overhaul of the system of planning and the management of education. The consideration made by the policy were number one is evolving a long term planning and management perspective of education and its integration with the country's developmental and manpower needs. Decentralization and the creation of a spirit of autonomy for educational institutions, giving importance to people's involvement, including association of non-governmental agencies and voluntary effort, inducting more women expert professionals in the planning and management of education, establishing the principle of accountability in relation to given objectives and norms. In May 1990, under the chairmanship of Acharya Ramamurthy, a committee was set up to review NPE and to make recommendations for its modifications. At the national level, the Central Advisory Board of Education, CABE, committee was set up in July 1991 under the chairmanship of Shri N. Janardhan Reddy to consider modification in NPE, that is, to review educational development, determine the changes required to improve the system and monitor implementation. This committee submitted its report in January 1992, which is known as National Program of Action of 1992. This policy aimed to produce national progress, a sense of common citizenship and culture and to strengthen national integration. Its focus was on the need for a radical reconstruction of the education system and to improve its quality at all levels and to give more attention to science and technology, to inculcate moral values and to develop a close relationship between education and the life of the people. From the above discussion, it is clear that National Policy of Education and its program of action 1986 show a clear blueprint of the administration of education from the grassroots level to the higher level with respect to the emerging issues like universalization of elementary education and eradication of illiteracy in addition to quality education with active participation of lo local communities, NGOs, charitable trusts and educationists so as to promote decentralization of education. For the talking to education administration at state level, state governments may establish state advisory bodies of education on the lines of CAMP. Effective steps will be taken to integrate mechanisms in the various state departments concerned with human resource development. Special attention will be paid to the training of educational planners administrators and heads of the institution. Moving to the district and the local level education administration, district boards of education will be created to administer education up to the higher secondary level. State governments will attend to this aspect with all possible expedition. 
within a multi-level framework of educational development, central, state, district and local level agencies will participate in planning, coordination, monitoring and evaluation. A very important role must be assigned to the head of an educational institution. Heads will be specially selected and trained. School complexes will be promoted on a flexible pattern so as to serve as a networks of institutions and synergic alliances to encourage professionalism among teachers to ensure observance of norms of conduct and to enable them sharing of experiences and facilities. It is expected that a developed system of school complexes will take over much of the inspection function in due course. In case of educational administration at local level, local communities through appropriate bodies will be assigned a major role in the programs of school improvement. Now next is the voluntary agencies and the aided institution. Non-government and voluntary efforts including social activist group will be encouraged to provide proper management and financial assistance. At the same time steps will be taken to prevent the commercialization of education by preventing mushroom growth of institutions. Education being portfolio of both state and central government, it is imperative to have autonomous organization like CBSE and BSE at the center and state levels to look after the functioning of the educational system. But the question arises to what extent people's participation should be ensured. According to NPPOA, at the district level, there should be District Institute of Education and Training, that is the diet duly assigned for the work of training the teachers and heads of the institutions. In order to develop true professionalism and to ensure observance of norms, conduct and to enable the sharing of experiences and facilities. But the national educational, but the educational surveys conducted by NCERT and other professional organizations reported that a large number of untrained teachers and providing service like 10th pass person is teaching to 10th class student. In order to make the system successful, we have to give utmost importance to its proper implementation with the active participation of the community based on pure research in the field of administration of education. In view of National Knowledge Commission, there is a multiplicity of management structures and the government departments in the administration of school education. This creates confusion, unnecessary replication and possibly inconsistent strategy across different schools. So there must be greater coordination between different departments of government on school education policy for ensuring more autonomy to the local community in matters of day-to-day -day administration of schools. In order to meet the changing dynamics of the population's requirement, the government of India would like to bring out a national education policy that is NPE 2016. For the first time, the government of India is getting on a time-bound grassroots consultative process which will enable the Ministry of HRD to reach out to individuals across the country throughout 2.75 lakhs direct consultation and also taking input from citizens online. NPE 2016 is also inviting people's view on school standards, assessment and administration system. According to the government, the for better governance structure, there is need to have school quality, assessment and accreditation system to cover all aspects of school functioning. Now let's revise what we have studied. Prior to 1947, the role of educational administrators in India was simply to carry out the restricted educational program developed by the British. Following independence, we have developed vastly expanded educational programs with greatly changed objectives. For the implementation of these new programs, the educational 
administrator's job takes on new dimensions and requires not only new theories of school administration but also new techniques. A series of commission and committees were appointed to survey, study, review and recommend improvements in different sectors of education in order to improve quality of education. Thank you.